Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and I am back with another home project. So as you can see, we are back at my mom's house for the third part in what was a one part project. Now it's a three part project. We were just painting the walls, then we are beefing up the molding, and today we are refinishing, I guess. We are painting and installing this antique mantle. So as you can see, it is beautiful. Um, it definitely needs just a little bit of work, so we're going to paint it. And then mom wants to build a box to go behind it. That way we can put all the wires for the TV up behind it, and we can put things like pretty greenery and all in the opening for Christmas or for different holidays. So we are going to be working on that. I will show you how we build the box, how we install it to the wall, how we paint it, the whole nine. But today, that is what we're working on. And we will finish this simple paint job project that has now turned into painting, molding, and fireplace. But the room will look so good when it's done. And I think mom is really going to enjoy it. Although she's still getting used to this paint color. We just painted this with my new Wagner Easy Paint Stick Roller. It was amazing. We painted this entire room. It's 15 by 17 in five hours with a lunch break, me and my mom. So apparently that, that went so quickly she thought we could do all these other projects. So I will leave the links below for the paint project. I will leave the links for the molding project, but today we're going to get started with this fireplace. So let's go. We got to carry this baby outside. All right, y'all. So as you can see, the sun is starting to go down. So we are going to hurry. I've got my Wagner here and we are going to spray the fireplace mantle and the molding. So you might see this little clip in both videos, but hopefully you're watching both videos anyways. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna fill this baby up. We're gonna spray everything continuously so we have a nice smooth ear coat. And I have to grab my respirator. Okay y'all, so now we are going to go ahead, we're going to use some pocket holes to join our box to the back of the fireplace so it bumps out from the wall a little bit. So I've got my Craig jig, I'm gonna clamp it to my little work table here. I usually clamp it right where this spot is because that's easiest. And I've already got it set on this side here to three quarters. Got this set to three quarters. It works with an impact driver, which I never knew. We grab a board. Three quarters is the width of our board. Making sure I'm still on camera, I am. Not one inch, so even though it says inch the boards are are three quarters so these are going to be the two sides attached to the back of the fireplace so i'm going to drill pocket holes all the way along the side here that are going to drill literally into the mantle and then i'm going to drill two at the top and those will drill up into the board that's going to rest on top of them always keep my, well not always, but I usually keep my Craig jig set for three quarters because that's the most common size board that I use. This back screw part that holds the board taut and steady, it always comes a little loose. So I do always need to reset that for the width of my board. 
make sure that's going the right way and we'll get started. Perfect. Now you guys know I usually use my, um, oh, what's it called? My shop vac and it attaches right here to keep all this sawdust free. But I'm at mom's house. She doesn't have one. I forgot to bring mine, so back to the old method and it's only three boards so it's fine you do want to make sure when you have long boards like this if they're not supported at the end I'm pushing down and I'm holding that board even though this is holding it I'm holding it tight against the bottom and the side so that it doesn't tilt halfway through and you end up drilling a monkey pocket hole. Now I'm just going to line this up to the center. Perfect. I'm going to drill one on either side for the top. So there's one board. You also want to make sure you're doing the back and not the side we already painted since we already painted these. We do the other one the exact same way and then we'll do the top. And I have a whole video on how to set up your Craig jug and use it, but FYI, you didn't know, this is how I set mine. Put that collar at the three quarters and then tighten it with this little guy. It must have come loose, so hopefully none of the holes we drilled are the wrong dimensions. We'll find out. For the top piece, we don't need to do the sides. We just need to do all the way along one side. That's gonna go directly into the mantle. did do one on either side of this board so that I know those ends are going to be held tight to the mantle. We want a really tight fit all the way around the edges so it looks like one continuous piece and when we pop those seams hopefully it will look continuous. Of course this is new wood, that's old wood so they won't be identical but we can get as close as we can get. This should do the trick. All right, so we've got our pocket hole screws. These are one inch and a quarter. I think we should do the top one first and then the sides. So I am gonna need your help holding it up top so we know it's in the right place. Let's this up a little more. You can stand up and, and push against it. This needs to be level. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of the pocket hole screws in right here. I'm going to drive it into the fireplace. Side, all the 
down its height. So that's exactly what we wanted. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six pocket holes across the top. I made sure I did one on each side and then across the middle. So now we're gonna go ahead and do, we'll do this side first since mom's holding this side. So make sure we line it up here and we'll make sure it's really close at the top. It doesn't matter if it it doesn't hit the floor. I mean, it does, but we can put some cord around that one. You know, and trim it if we need to trim it. Because the, the fireplace is leaning right now. Does this go against here? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it was too far over. Go ahead and put one right here at the top. That'll hold it, so just keep holding it steady. So this, hold it really tight to the top. It is tight all the way down, except for this one that came out the side. And I would guess if I looked, this is probably the one that the collar came off of when we were drilling outside and it probably drilled it at a funny angle or something. And that's why it's not straight. But as you can see, mom's no longer having to hold it. Even this one leg is supporting the weight. So we're gonna put the second leg on We'll need your help to, you know, keep it straight and tight and okay. all those fun things, but knock on wood, it's working, right? Yeah. It's looking like you want it to? Yeah. Because it's going to, you know, we could make a little fire box and we're going to we'll put greenery in it. Let me put my cords for my TV in there. Yeah, she wants to contain this yeah. lovely this lovely mess So now we'll have to see if it's, get it centered so that I can cut the pieces of the molding where those back two boards are because we want the boards to slide right in flush against the wall and not have a weird molding gap. Center. against the molding and I'll draw on either side of that board so I know exactly where to cut. I found a pin. We had one yesterday. All right. I think it looks got a pin. Pretty good. You think it looks good? Is it just what you wanted? Yeah, I think it's gonna look good. 
Come in now or forever hold your peace. We're getting ready to draw on the antique molding. No, it's not. Inside too, because we got to cut up the whole notch for it to fit in. Alright y'all, so as you can see, I already started, the camera was having a problem, but I've got my little multi-tool. It's the same thing I used to cut out the molding um, when mom and I built the cabinet in my laundry room. So I'm just going over those lines where I drew them on either side of that board, and I am just cutting, notching that out. This top part already came off, so that's actually very helpful because now I can see how deep the next part is, and I'm just cutting. Just fit it right in there. To start with, I just put it on the line and then you just push. This molding is very deep in some parts and not as deep in other parts. So you just gotta keep going to get all the way through. So that is how you do it. We checked with the cleat. We vacuumed it all up. Here's all our pieces of molding. Now, ideally, it comes out in one piece, um, but it, it's just a lot easier when it comes out in multiple pieces. Of course, if I ever wanted to try to fix this, it's, not gonna happen. it's just not going to happen. Well, I mean, okay, I could piece this together and it would work, but it's going to be it's never going to be like it was. We knew that when we were cutting into it, we're putting an antique mantle here. That's what we wanted. But keep that in mind. Really want a piece you can re-put in and caulk and paint over in the future. Don't bust it up. All right, now other side. So we've got this all cut out here, we've got all our pieces from this side, and now we're going to go ahead and push the mantle back so that we can make sure it fits. We've got our other guide cleat here, make sure it fits before I move away. Which the cleat and the other thing were cut out of the same wood, wasn't it? Yeah, well, no. Oh, it actually doesn't fit, so it's a good thing I haven't moved yet. It looks like right here is a little too narrow, so I'm going to go ahead and try to, I guess, shave that a smidge so that this can fit in here. So, it's a couple days later, and as you can see, we are back at work with the fireplace. So, we went ahead, we did move the fireplace into space, um, into those two grooves that we cut out for the fireplace in the molding. Um, it fit perfectly, but then we just left it for a few days, let mom live with it. She was trying to decide if she just wanted to put it on the wall, or if she wanted to do something with the wall. And that is where the idea of the shiplock came in. So we are going to shiplock from this corner around to the other corner, just the box here. And then we will put the fireplace mantle in place and cock it to the wall, secure it, all of those things. But in the meantime, she had another idea 
we are going to take this board off and we are going to cut two, essentially just two slices of the board. That way we can put it on a hinge. She wants to put all of her electrical things in here for her TV and her DVR and her, what else do you have? Your fire stick, all that kind of stuff. So that way it's not out on top of the mantle. So we're gonna just take this off, slice it, put this portion, we're just gonna do in between the um, pocket holes here on a hinge and then we'll put it back in place. Then we will keep going. So we got the screws and we're going to mark where we need to drill the holes and then mount this. You're doing something stupid, but I can't get this off. Mm -hmm. Killing it. Okay, so we're going to mark where we need to drill the holes. It's not just me, it's just... You no, know, this one is always hard to get off the sander for some reason. It's just a tight. So we gotta mount it this way because this is where the on-off switch are. Not down. So the question is whether I think this way will be easier for you to reach in and plug things in than if you have to reach in and down. Okay. Don't you think? Yeah, probably. So let's go ahead and do it here. And let's how do we how do we tell where the screws go? We make a template. We make a template. How do we make the template? Right. Yeah. Show us her template magic, Mom. Okay. Just put it right here. Like this. I do it the same on both places. I figure out where the hole is. Exactly way up there. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, I'll be able to go right in the middle of that giant hole. I'll just do it like, closer to the edge. Where's the battery? You were supposed to put on this. Right here. Okay. 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 Okay
All right, so now that we've got this on here, she's going to go get some cup hooks, and we're going to put a cup hook here and a cup up here just to hold the extension cord where we want it, and then we are going to move on to the ship lap. And I don't know that we told you because it was late at night when we were doing the molding, but when we cut the two pieces of molding out, since this is antique trim, we... We don't think we're gonna ever wanna take this all apart and put the molding back, but just in case, we put the molding for each side in a separate baggie and we've taped it inside the fireplace here. That way, just in case we ever decide to try to puzzle it back together, we have the pieces. out of the way and we're going to work on the ship lap. But the first thing we wanted to do was just kind of hold or tape a few ship lap pieces up and put the fireplace in place to make sure that it all works and looks right um, with the depth of the molding. That way if it doesn't and we need to cut out pieces of ship lap around the fireplace, we know that. Okay, all right, so Let's turn the fireplace around. Yeah, first. And then we'll do the show. I'm going to try to hold it from the actual fireplace and not the part that's all in pieces. It's less sturdy. To figure out which of those is what size. All right, help me put this in place. And you saw me, you saw me paint these, um, but we just had the guy at Home Depot um, rip them for us in six and a half and seven inch wide panels. And then I ran my little mouse sander all over the edges so there, are plywood and splinter quite a bit. It says video connection lost. 
pause for a moment, we must reconnect the football game. Okay, so um, we put a piece of shit up here just in place to see. And with this pushed all the way in, everything looks fine. Once everything's in place, we'll be able to park that seam. So essentially what we're gonna do now is check I think just all the way across, um, kind of dry fit them in place. We cut them at six and a half and seven inch widths, but, and that should work mathematically, but it's not perfect. We may or may not need to cut one. Essentially, the plan of attack is to um, paint the wall. We've got our little roller here just behind where these are going to meet. We will put them in place with the brag gun and then use, we have some quarters as spacers. Put the next one, brought it in, paint all the way across. Once it's all done, we will caulk all the seams and do any touch up paint, especially over those little brad nail holes. But that's, I mean, that's essentially the steps. Now, if you buy actual shiplap um, and different hardware stores have it ready to go, it has tongue and groove kind of fits together. So you don't have to use quarters for spacers and you don't have to use quarters. Um, we actually have some other little blind samples because mom wants to get blinds in here that she thinks will be easier to use. The main goal is to get something that's about a quarter diameter um, thickness that you have multiples of. That way it'll be the same distance all the way across. Um, and I think that's all the tips that I have. We're just going to go ahead and put y'all in time lapse and go all the way across. Then move the fireplace out of the way. We just wanted to make sure that it would fit. So here's the thing, Mom. Mom. This is the seven inch one, and it's seven inches to the edge here. Okay. It is not seven inches to the bottom there. So how can that be that off? Because the wall is wonky. So I think all we can do is paint and brad and go, and then if we have to cut one, we have to cut one. Yeah. I mean. Well, if it's if it's wonky on the inside. I think you'd or... rather have it be one of the inside pieces that's wonky. So I think it's yeah. not worth. I know. <laughs> I don't think it's worth dry fitting it so much. No. Let's just start. I think we just need yeah. to start painting and then bradding and painting and bradding and okay. going all the way across. Let me get a ladder. Yeah.
right, y'all. So, as you can see, it's all painted. It's caught to the ceiling. It's beautiful. We hung the very fancy, very ever attractive television. Every house needs. And now we are going to drill into this backboard. So if you remember back to the beginning of the video when we added this board back here to extend the mantle, you're going to drill into that board right here. I've got an inch and a half wide paddle. We're going to drill and then we're going to be able to put all these, all these very fa fabulous cords through that hole and plug it in to our extension cord that we showed you we mounted in here earlier. Then we will put another hole at the bottom and the, this cord will come out that side and It'll plug in the plug. to the plug instead of all of these coming down and going into the plug. We also bought, is it still on the porch? We bought a, a little cord box for these to go in oh. on the wall to hide them. So we go ahead and set you on fast forward. We're going to drill. I'll just leave you here. It won't take long. We're going to drill. We're going to hide the cords. And then I will show you tomorrow morning when the sun's up, everything all styled and finished. We're very excited. So now we've got a little cable cord thing, and I've already taken it apart. It's got a bunch, I think it has 12 of these in here. It has 12 of these long, skinny, I think they're 16 inches. I should say on the side here 16.9 channels. There's 16 of them. They are easily cut, so I just used. Um, this pair of scissors and a very strong, very strong kitchen scissors, and I cut it to the right length. And we're going to put this just right behind the TV here, and put all the cords in the side of it so that you don't see them. They um, go right into the paneling, the shiplap. So and it's paintable. Yes. So if this was still a sea foam, sea salt wall we could paint it to match the wall. All right. How's that? Good? Not too bad. I think it would be better to put that mountain up on the wall and then put all the quotes inside. I'm just it. trying to see. But maybe I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. I'm just trying to see how it fits. How it fits and if it's gonna work. But yeah. Smile. So it also has this super sticky, strong, tapey stuff. That is the professional name. Super sticky, tapey stuff. Google it if you don't believe me. Actually, it says adhesive tape, so I'm not too far off. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put it, and I think we're going to mount it so that the opening's on that side, right? Since that's... Yes easier to access. Alright, so I think we just stick it on all the way down. Yeah. And then cut it. Perfect. Alright then. I just got my nails done since you saw me last. So I know I'm super fancy. Mom got her nails done too. But they're not as fancy as Betsy's because my nails aren't as fancy. We got our nails done the exact same way. My nails are just 
prettier than mom's. My nails are fat and stubby, and Betsy has long, Mom's skinny nails. nails. Or as mom calls them, grandma's nails. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so the opening's on the left. Let's go ahead and just put it on the wall so you hold the TV out. And you don't want to put it down all the way. Mm -hmm. You pull it there. Mm -hmm. Put your finger stick here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that's good. All right, so obviously I was in front of that, but we put it about maybe an inch and a half from the actual mantle because the cords need room to go through the hole. Yeah. And we then lined it up with the ship lap here. We just press it down and then we'll put the cords through it and they'll disappear like magic. And then when we put something decorative right in front of it, you won't even see it. You won't even see it. That's another post. That's another post for another day. Mom wants to build a fancy box to put her DVD player and DVR and all that jazz in. So that, so that you don't have a DVD player sitting on this fancy mantle we just put together. Yeah, buddy. All right, so that was the first step. Okay. Now, do you want to do the ones around the corner? Um, or do you want to wait until tomorrow for that? Tomorrow. Because the hole isn't quite big enough. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go home and get my Dremel to make it a little bigger. And I have a my little fancy door here that I can reach in and attach new things. Yeah. And eventually we are putting bricks in here as well. So, you know, all of that will 100% be hidden. But even without the bricks, it looks good just like this. You can just fill this with a basket and some flowers or a bunch of blankets or yeah or nothing wood wood stuff some really cool wood up. so there you go i think it looks good the square does a really good job everything looks really well and covered and even and everything so we will we'll show you tomorrow morning fixing the hole and going around the corner and then i will we will uh put all these fun ladders and tools away and style everything and be done with it. So the ship lap is done, fireplace is done, fireplace is installed. I can't wait until we put the bricks in, but for now, this is exactly how we did it. We built out the box, we cut out the molding, slid this right into place. The ship lap is definitely not necessary, like we could have just left the fireplace at the end of this project, but when you have an antique mantelpiece like this, but she wants it to be a showstopper and she wanted it to look like it's integrated into the wall because this was just a ply, plywood. Is that the right word, mom? That's not the right word. Drywall. This was just a drywall wall as opposed to going over the existing uh, fireplace here. There is a brick fireplace back there, but yeah. this was drywall. That's another whole story. That's all another whole problem. This whole house is a hundred years old, so antique mantle. We put the ship lap up so that it looks like one solid piece. You can actually see on the floor where they they must have had tile or a hearth at some point when they bricked this up. Then they replaced it with the same hardwood as the rest of the house. Um, and so we, we did think about laying a tile floor of some kind for that hearth. But in the mm -hmm. end, we decided we didn't need it. If in the future she wants to do that, it would be easy enough to add under here. Now, once we add the bricks to the fireplace, we will come back and just caulk this to the wall on either side 
and really make it look like one solid piece. But for now, I mean, you can see the effect. This is it. Ta-da! So I hope you liked this project. I hope it helps you think of some projects of your own, whether you're working with an antique mantle or you're looking to ship up your wall. These were some fun, exciting ideas. And the ship lap cost, we got three boards. They were $20, $20 $22 a $66 to ship lap the entire surround. We ended up having five pieces of the ship lap panels left. So we could have done a little more, but obviously we didn't need to. Um, and then the mantle, depending on which kind of mantle you're buying or if you already have one, that's going to differ. But, I mean, overall, this was a very budget-friendly project. Yeah. So, and I think it does really transform the room, especially with the added molding and the paint color. So all three things. Somehow, I told Mom we were going to paint her room. And we painted, extended the molding, painted the fireplace, shift left to the wall, and she still thinks we're bricking this fireplace. Yeah. So, stay tuned. But for the most part... The big pieces of the room are finished. Her little mini room makeover is done. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notifications, share with your friends, and Mom and I will see you in the next project where we will not be working at Mom's house. <laughs> bye, y'all. Say bye, Daisy. Say bye, Daisy. Are you in the video? Daisy says bye. Thank you.